Alrighty guys, and welcome to Maximizing Profit Potentials by Turning B and C Grade Listings into A++ Listings. A lot of times our listings are just one optimization away from becoming an A++ listing, but we stop exploring prematurely because that we always just assume that the grass is greener somewhere else. So for most, the research and development process for an Etsy shop looks something like this. Analyze your competition, find some keyword opportunities, decide on the product we're gonna make, we're gonna create the product, publish it, and repeat. And that pretty much is the standard when it comes to your research and development when you're making new products for Etsy. We all know by now the game of Etsy is always having a consistent inflow of new products and research and development should never stop. So that process that I just explained we know now that to win on Etsy, you have to have a consistent inflow. It's an engine, it never stops. We have to keep feeding the algorithm, enhancing our product listings, getting more product listings, so on and so far. So one just little hint with that note, you know, what I always tell people, it's, it's a marathon a not a sprint. Uh, pick a launch number that's realistic to you and stick to it. So if realistically you can put out 10 new listings per month, then do 10 listings per month. If you can do 50 per month, do 50 per month. The winning isn't what that number is. The winning is being consistent with it and seeing growth over long periods of time. And so if you didn't know that was a part of an Etsy engine, hopefully you know now that to be successful in Etsy, you can never stop launching, right? It's just a part of this game. It's a horizontal scaling business. Right? Once you have your Etsy ads maxed out, the only other way you can make more money is by launching more things and having more things to sell. But that is not the point of this series. Um, that's just standard. So the issue is, is we get so caught up in the next thing that we tend to neglect important data uh, and improve upon what's already serving us and what's already working. So because while Etsy is a game of always launching new things to sell, it is also a game of competing against your last best metric, okay? So the Etsy algorithm, this is my beautiful picture I drew for you guys of a waterfall. It's like a waterfall, right? You're gonna launch products and you're gonna try to get things into that waterfall if the waterfall represents that algorithm, right? And sometimes we're gonna throw things at that algorithm and it's gonna miss and it's gonna land in the bushes and it's gonna land in the dirt over here. But every once in a while, you know, a percentage of everything that we throw out that algorithm, it's gonna hit the algorithm and it's hopefully gonna turn into a B or an A listing or maybe even a C listing, right? Where it kind of makes sales or it's making good sales or maybe even has a bestseller badge and our pool turns into, you know, this pool, I put A here, but really like a pool of C, B and A listings, A, B and C listings, right? And we start, we keep throwing new things at the algorithm, new product ideas to, you know, increase our pool size. But what we really want to do is not only just have, you know, our pool that looks like this with a bunch of A listings, we wanna have a pool that's full of not just A and B and C listings, but we wanna have a large pool of A listings and A plus listings and A plus plus listings and maybe even a viral product in there that's going viral multi-platform, not just on Etsy, right? And so we wanna expand our pool. We don't wanna limit our pool to just this guy. We want it to be this massive sea abyss, <laughs> okay? Um, so I've often found that some of the lowest hanging fruit for stores is not to introduce new products, but to actually approve, improve upon what is already there. And that's actually the lowest hanging fruit for them. And making new brand and making brand new products and designs is a lot bigger effort than improving upon what's already there. So I call this a rerun. And a rerun is when you run the same product again with either a different main image or a new value proposition or maybe even some new keywords to see what it does when it hits the algorithm for a second time, okay? And what I'm proposing is, <laughs> is in your weekly or monthly launch schedule, which you should already have, right, to keep that engine going, right, in your existing launch schedule, consider doing this. So if your launch schedule currently is 10 new products a month and it's always 10 new products per month, 
consider doing a mix of not just launching all new things, but split testing or doing reruns of what's already working in your shop. So if your launch schedule is 10 new per month, maybe consider doing five in five and breaking it up. This is going to ensure that we're fully explore, we fully explore a product potential before we forget about it. The truth is we only have so many hours in the day, so we want to make sure that the time we spend is yielding us the best possible results, right? And so what we don't want to do is have a great, you know, have our set of our best case scenario listings that are best sellers and our A listings, but then just say that's it and move on to the next, right? It took, requires a lot of energy and time to think of new products all the time. So we might as well further explore the product opportunities that are already serving us and make sure that we're tapping out the potential of that product opportunity before we just move on to the next you know, batch of listings, right? And so we're gonna take this engine, right? That, and I just put 10 new products here per month because you know, let's just say it's 10 new products per month. We're gonna take this existing engine and we're gonna turn it into something like this. So we're adding a step in here where instead of just going for the jugular and chasing what everyone else is doing in our launch schedule, we're gonna add in a second step here where we actually take a step back and we analyze our own existing products. So how do we decide which products we should do reruns on? Okay, oh, is this a duplicate slide? Oh, I just went back one slide. Okay. <laughs> so when I'm deciding what, what, like how do we even know what we want to do a rerun on, right? So the only thing, I'm just going to preference this first, the only thing that I care about is profit. So my next best decision on what products I'm going to do a rerun on is solely going to be based around profit because, and you don't have to use profit tree because I'm going to use profit tree, but the point I'm trying to make is, you can do this based off revenue, but a lot of times, especially in this example, you're going to see, you know, the things that make you the most revenue aren't necessarily the ones making you the most profit and you want to optimize for profit or you can do whatever you want. It's your business, but I'm going to optimize. I would optimize for profit because actually the only thing that really matters in business at the end of the day is profit and allowing profit to guide your next best decisions. So I, in this example, in this case study, I'm going to show you how to do this in profit tree, but you know, you don't have to use profit tree. You can use, uh, your stats in Etsy. Uh, you know, there's a million ways to kill one bird with, I don't know what I'm saying, but <laughs> there's a million ways to do this. Um, I'm just going to show you how I personally do it. And of course I'm going to use my tool because this is why I built it. <laughs> All right. So there's three types of reruns when it comes to deciding the type of rerun rerun we're going to do, we need to first understand the three different types of reruns. So the first type of refund I call it is the falling star. It's a product that historically that was performing good, but it's on its way out, right? Because we know that listings have a lifespan, right? Just because you post a listing today and it's a bestseller, that doesn't mean it's going to be a bestseller, you know, eight months from now, right? Or a few years from now. So sometimes for the falling stars, Sometimes for these, it's a matter of split testing the main image and giving it a fresh new shot at the algorithm. And then I put in bold here, duplicate, do not edit an existing. So that's just a standard. If we're ever going to do a rerun, a rerun, we're always going to duplicate and run it again because we're competing our last against our best, last, our best, our last best metric. Okay. We don't want to just edit the existing listing because that listing has already been judged by the algorithm, right? So we always want to change, duplicate, change, publish again, right? So that new listing can get a fresh shot at the algorithm. So let's just show you an example of how I spot falling stars. So like I mentioned, I'm going to use profit tree because profit tree, I, I only care about profit in my business when it comes to guiding me. So this is what a profit tree dashboard looks like. And the dashboard obviously is just showing you high level stats. It's showing your profit after all of your fees, after all of your transaction fees, processing fees, ad costs, and the most important piece of the pie here, which is your product cost, right? And you have a really nice visual here of holistic shop health data. And you can see, you know, the overarching trend of how things are going, right? Are your production costs getting more expensive? 
expensive? Is your profit increasing or decreasing compared to the previous time period, right? The, pro the dashboard is really just to show you high level stats, but we're not focused on that. Right now we wanna go into our listing reports. So we're under a listing report for our current year. And so what we want to identify is a falling star, which is a, sh a listing that historically was doing well, but it's on a downward trend. So the first thing that I do is I come over here and I sort it by most profitable because obviously I care about the products that have historically made me the most money, right? And so what I want to see, what I'm going to do here with this first one with the falling stars is see if I can bring back a listing from the dead and <laughs> which I'll explain more of what that is. So here is a product which is really interesting that is second in line for generating me the most profit for the year but you can see we're on a drastic downward trend in terms of the amount of profit it's doing this year compared to the previous year. So when I click on that product I can scroll down here and I can see a detailed report of how each variation option is performing in that listing. And you can clearly see here that we were doing really good at the beginning of the year, but now it's just on this really harsh decline compared to the previous time period. And so what would I do with this listing in terms of a rerun? For products like this that were historically doing good, sometimes it's just a matter, like I said, of just split testing the main image and giving it a fresh new shot. So here's an example of exactly that, right? There was this image that got switched to this image, this historically sold good, and then it was on a decline, and then all of a sudden, they changed the main image to this image, and now it, it's making consistent sales again. So it was just a matter of enhancing that main image. And usually images are the main thing, right? Images are the main moment of truth, right? You could argue it could be new keywords and stuff like that, which keywords you can check in your stats. But honestly, most of the time, the, the best shot at revamping something that's on a downward trend is by repositioning it or trying out a new main image. Keep in mind that this is the only way I've ever seen products come back from the dead. If you test a product one or two more times like this and it does nothing, then usually it's a product problem and it's better to focus on a new, new or different product opportunities and put this one to rest knowing that we've maxed out its potential. So when it comes to this first type of rerun, right? So if we have 10 product launches, here is one, right? So let's put this in our pipeline for the month out of one out of the 10 new listings that we're going to make. So when I say 10 new product launches per month, it doesn't mean you have to launch 10 new products, right? It means that you can, five of those could just be split testing and doing a new fresh round of photography or making some new mockups to see if maybe we just have to enhance the image or you know split test the image a few more times and run it again. And my point here is if you do do this and you split test the image one or two more times, uh, you, you stage it a little bit different or in that case you we clearly you know they clearly brightened the image and made it better and it solved it and sometimes that will hit the algorithm better better than it did before and it will come back but if you test it one or two more times and nothing changes then normally it's just no one wants the product anymore it's out it's going out so we don't want to focus on it but at least we can walk away from that product with confidence knowing that we did what we needed to do in order to ensure that we, we could or could not bring it back from the dead. Now, the second type of refunds, it reruns is the trendsetters. So it's a product that's actually on its way up, but maybe not fully explored. So let me show you what this looks like. So here we are back in profit tree and we actually see in this third position here, we have a product and it's actually interesting that it's a single product. All of these are bundles and this is actually a listing that's by itself that's on its way up compared to the previous time period, like drastically up, right? And what's actually interesting about this profit wise, this is in position three, but when you go to your Etsy stats, it's actually in position four. So it's actually interesting to see that this is this single product is actually making more profit than this one that you know is saying that it's making us more revenue. All right, so now if we click on this listing, let's click on it, we can come in here and see the overall listing stats, right? You can see it holistically here, how it's doing over time, but we can also see 
the actual unique variation option that's selling the most and actually what variation option is making us the most profit. So it's interesting to see that this, the 20 inch pillow is making more profit than any of the 16, 18s, lumbars, right? And so what would be interesting to explore is further exploring this 20 inch pillow, right? And we can clearly see that there's been, you know, some pretty consistent sales over the last year compared to this year, but then all of a sudden it's starting to do extremely well, which could have been, you know, the result of someone leaving a really good review or maybe Etsy featured it somewhere. So we want to keep this momentum going. We obviously know that this product is doing well. And so if, you know, they hadn't explored testing out this product in multiple different ways to compete against its, you know, already performing metric, then they would want to consider doing a few things. So in this case scenario, that was a one, you know, that was one product in that listing that was in the main image and we know that it's working. So why not split test it that same 20 inch yellow pillow in a, in a set, right? And put it into a bundle, right? Or what if we just did the more for less strategy and we did two 20 by 20 side by side in the main image and it's, basically showing you know the front end price you can buy it by itself or a second drop down menu saying that you can buy two two of them in a bundled set for maybe a slightly cheaper price right and we actually know that this is something that works in this shop based off of other data so if we haven't already bundled it with two so the main image is showing two for a slightly cheaper price or if we haven't explored putting it into a bundle somewhere right because we also know bundles sell really well why don't we you know try this out especially if that's the only listing that exists with that product in it right and just like that we already have accomplished three out of the five new listing ideas that we're going to post for this month just off of that those two uh reruns now the third type of rerun is product report inspiration product stats that are so sexy that it inspires you to make a product with an increased value proposition out of it. So what we were just analyzing in Profit Tree was a listing report, but what I'll show you now in Profit Tree is something really, really cool. So before, like I mentioned, we were on the listing report and analyzing uh, on the listing level, and now we are on the product report, which is analyzing each individual product by itself. So all of the variation options combined. And so sometimes what happens here when you're analyzing your product is that you actually get product level inspiration for future renditions of products. So what's interesting here is when you sort it by the most profit and the products that are making us the most profit, you can see that these three SKUs are actually making us the most profit in comparison to the bundle. So BUN means bundle, which means you get, you know, three in a set basically, but these are individual items. So what does that mean? That means that we can also take this as an opportunity to ex further explore upon what's already working. So this is really, an, the image is showing, you know, the listing image, but these are actual individual SKUs for single product types, for, for a single item, right? Even though the picture shows more than one, it's actually identifying the only one product in there. <laughs> but we know that because of the SKU. And by the way, guys, if you want to learn how to do SKUs for your store, I have a bonus at the end of this whole module for you. We basically have a free tool that will help you and a training that helps you set up your SKUs um, because SKUs do a lot of things for your business in terms of tracking. You can use Profit Tree without SKUs. It's built with the logic that you can still do profit tracking without it, but there's a lot of benefits that come with actually identifying your products properly with SKUs. So that's a whole free bonus at the end of this. Um, but anyway, let's get back to the point that we're trying to make here. So remember on that product level, not on the listing level, we found interesting insights about uh, that are three products that are actually making us the most profit are three individual pillows, not even a bundle, right? So what we could do with that, we could do a bundle more for slightly less. So because those were all individual SKUs, we could do the same thing by putting two in the main image and then do the same thing where it's just, you know, the main image is showing two of the same pillow because we know that that actually works, right? Um, and then we could, or we could also take two individual items and put them together in a bundle if that makes sense so we could take let's go back to show you 
So we could take, if we don't already have it, you know, say this skew and this skew and put it in a bundled set because these are the two that are individually making us the most money. So why don't we split test putting those two together since people love them individually, if they don't already exist in a bundle together, why don't we run a new listing with two of the best selling products that sell best individually and actually put fuel under the fire and sell them and show, showcase them stage and image together, right? If we don't already have that. Um, moreover, right, we see that here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, in the seventh position, right, this image is that exact example of taking two and putting the two of the same things with that value proposition of more for slightly less, right? So now you can buy one by itself and it's one price or for the price of two, you can get a slight discount, right? So why don't we do that same scenario that we know is working for this listing and implement that in this one, this one, and this one because a lot of people like to buy two anyway. So we might as well make that unique value proposition and split test that value proposition that otherwise doesn't already exist. Now, again, what is the winning in all of this, right? By doing this, you're ensuring that your time spent is yielding you the best case scenario outcomes while constantly challenging your listings last best metrics, right? So we're always improving upon what we know is already working. So what are some other examples for say print on demand sellers? So if you are a POD shop and you have a hot product that's killing it, but does not offer personalization, what, you know, so if you go into profit tree and you see that your top selling product is a shirt and it doesn't currently offer the value proposition of personalization and you've kind of stayed away from personalization because it's more work on your back end, right? But maybe if we see that this existing item actually would make sense with a personalization component, it actually would put fuel under the fire, right? We can take that best selling product based off profit, duplicate it and try it out with a personalization component and see like we already know the product is hot, right? So we might as well just maximize it, you know, and even add more value to it by adding the personalization component and seeing which one actually gets, you know, better click through rates, better conversion rates, right? And if it's the one with the personalization, then we obviously know that we just optimize the existing value proposition, you know, to make it even more perceived valuable. And again, we're going to duplicate and run it again with a clear value add in value proposition. Other examples, more for less. So taking the same one thing that people already love and bundling it twice. So maybe if this if it makes sense for your product, you know, if you want, <laughs> you know, most people already are buying two pillows, right? You know, you can buy one or you can buy two for slightly less price. Um, if your main image is not advertising the most purchased product in your listing. Uh, okay, so this is a really good example as well. And this is something that's really easy to spot. So that was kind of like that example when we found that the 20 inch pillow is actually making, you know, more than 50% of the sales. But if the 20 inch pillow wasn't the one being advertised or 20 inches wasn't the top keyword in the listing, right? Then we would want to optimize or duplicate the listing and optimize for what's actually sell what variation option is actually selling the most. So this is very common in print on demand. So uh, if you have a, you know, a really best selling print on demand shirt and the, but when you go and you look at in profit tree, the variation option that's actually making you the most money and it's a white female shirt, but the mock-up is showing a tan on a guy, right? <laughs> then we might want to duplicate the listing and change the main image to a white shirt on a female, right? Since that's the, the actual variation option that's being purchased the most in the listing. Overall, guys, I just want to say thank you so much for staying to the end. If you did say the end, um, some free stuff for you here. You're going to get two months of free automated profit tracking with ProfitTree.io. And again, we have a free SKU generator tool and the training that comes with that. If you're you know, a handmade seller, this is more for handmade sellers. You don't really need to set up SKUs if you're a print-on-demand seller. But if you're a handmade seller like me and you want to learn the value of SKUs and what they do for your store, then that free training and a free SKU generator tool is going to be included. But overall, guys, thank you so much for staying until the end. 